All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and last week, this week just gone, we have made some significant technical repair in terms of the charts. So today is just going to be focusing on the charts. I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I expect to see in the week ahead. I'm going to start with crypto because there's not a great deal to say about crypto. And what I have to say about Bitcoin applies to pretty much all of the blockchain stocks I've got and all of the other crypto positions as well. So first of all, I want to point to this Wyckoff accumulation for Bitcoin. This seems to be playing out. So not much more to say about that apart from I expect this to resolve to the upside. That's what I'm looking to see for Bitcoin. If I hop into this fractal chart here, as you can see, we're outpacing this and I kind of expect to see a right translated cycle form, meaning we're going to spend probably another two to three weeks going up before we then drop into a cycle low. So if I hop into the cycle chart to show you this, you can see here, if I grab this date here and pull it out, we are on day 30 right now. There doesn't have to be a mid cycle low form, but usually this is the sort of thing you would get. So it would be perfectly within the realm of expectation and perfectly within the normal behavior of Bitcoin to see some sort of pullback, some sort of sharp sell off over the next couple of days before we resume higher. Again, it doesn't mean we have to see one of these, but this is the kind of thing I would be more than expecting to see from Bitcoin over the coming days. So does that mean we do get a sharp pull down on Monday or Tuesday or perhaps even on Wednesday before we can then resume higher? As it stands, that remains to be seen. But given where we are, given we're at the midpoint of this cycle, it's perfectly within the realm of expectation to see some sort of half cycle low before we can resume higher. And then we'll be looking ahead to see where this next 60 day cycle low will form, which is due around the 28th of February. So that's all I really have to say about Bitcoin. Be open to a bit of a pullback in the early part of this week. But whether we get it or not, I expect this to resolve higher over the coming few weeks. So here's Ethereum, pretty much the same thing. I think if Bitcoin is going to get a little half cycle shakeout, we'll probably see Ethereum pull back before it goes. But I also expect this to resolve higher. And the same kind of applies to all crypto. Obviously, most altcoins tend to sort of mimic and follow Bitcoin's path. So still holding this long for XRP, it's still pushing this long for Matic, which appears to be starting to gain some traction, which is nice to see. But again, I'm open to seeing this half cycle low. It doesn't mean that one of these couldn't constitute as a half cycle low. And if I hop back to Bitcoin, perhaps, I mean, there's no real clear half cycle low here, but perhaps we could just say that that, that shakeout from this top to the bottom was it. But I would think most probably we will get to see a bit of a deeper pullback. Zcash as well continues to push up. So again, I'll be open to seeing a little bit of a pullback early week, but if not, then that's fine. And the exact same thing is true of all of these blockchain related stocks here. So this is indicative to me, this big green candle that we had on Friday for Coinbase, that perhaps we've already left behind the mid cycle point. Perhaps we are attacking the next few weeks already. But again, I'm open to seeing a bit of a shakeout. And the absolute same is true of MicroStrategy. The same is true of Riot. And the same is true of Marathon. So really not much more to say about that apart from a long and strong continue to push on all of these positions. And like I keep saying, I'm open to seeing some sort of shakeout early week. In terms of gold and silver, there's not a great deal to say. We continue to push this trade. The stop has been choked up. So either way, we're walking away with significant profit. I've already taken half the trade off. So I think this move is likely getting exhausted. And I would not at all be surprised to see a sharp sell off in gold that drops into a cycle low because there's just no clear one since all the way back here. And normally we get these very consistent sort of 20 to 28 day cycles for gold. And there's just hasn't been one in a while. So if we do get some sort of sharp sell off, that would not be at all surprising to me. Silver is still kind of this it's still kind of sideways, isn't it? It's still kind of not really doing much. To me, this is starting to look like it's rounding and wants to resolve lower. So if gold is going to have a sharp sell off, then perhaps we can see silver dive down lower and then we can look to deal with longs as and when they show up. But for now, there's not really much to say about that. Still pushing both the minor positions and I think I've illustrated it on this chart. Yeah, so we're getting the first early warning signs of a technical breakdown here. We could draw this line and be a bit stricter like this. I'll see how this goes, but I'm looking to possibly exit the minor positions and I would not be at all surprised if the gold position ends up being exited this week as well. Now, whether or not that comes from dollar strength, whether or not that comes from a bounce in the dollar or whether this is just because after FOMC stocks are going to rally and therefore risk appetite is going to come on a bit better and therefore maybe we could see gold sell off. As ever, we have to take things one day at a time, but where things start to get super, super, super interesting for me is in the stock market in the US equities. The Dow Jones is still kind of in no man's land, but 
it's had ample opportunity to break down here, okay? It's had, it spent a bunch of time consolidating. It came back to retest that. It made a higher low, and it's now resolving to the upside. So again, it's still in no man's land. It could definitely roll over from here. But this, to me, doesn't speak to breakdown, really. This, to me, says that we would have broken down already if that was going to happen. So I kind of expect this to sort of chop around and break out above this line here. Of course, FOMC on Wednesday will be a massive deciding factor in this. But if we hop into a NASDAQ chart, the NASDAQ... It's hard for me to say that this looks anything other than bullish. We've had a technical repair. We've had a breakout of this downward slope in red resistance line, as you can see, with a retest followed by a resumption higher. What's more, we're right above these local highs here. We are just sitting on the top of this wick here. If I click this onto a line chart so you can see on a daily closing basis, we have indeed closed above the local high back here. So again, this speaks to major technical repair. Now, it does not mean that we couldn't roll over, and perhaps we will on Wednesday. If so, I think things are going to get quite ugly quite fast. However, we had one, two, three, four attempts to break this lows down here, and we just didn't. Then we shot back up. We broke out of this red downward slope and resistance line with a retest and resumption, and now we're above these local highs here. So as far as I can see, things look more constructive in the NASDAQ than they have in a very, very, very long time. And it's quite a similar story for the S&P 500. You can see we moved down here, we spent some time consolidating, then we made a higher low, then we broke out retest and resuming off, and now we're right into this cluster of highs. So if we were going to get hung up, if we were going to stall out, and if we were going to roll over, this would be the area to do it. You can see not quite as strong as the NASDAQ on a closing basis when I flip into the line chart. So this is a big area to clear for the S&P 500, but we're only a few points away from that. I think if we can get above, say, 4,100 on a closing basis, this is going to open up a big, big, big rally to the upside for the US equities. The VIX still refuses to break out. Now, again, it doesn't mean it couldn't break out and we couldn't see a volatility event, and it doesn't mean that we couldn't see the stock market roll over. But as of right now, we're being well contained under this red line. I'll zoom out a bit here so you can see what's going on. And if the stock market really is going to break out if we if this breakout that we've seen on friday is going to be for real and it's going to follow through then i would expect the vix to continue to drop down lower hopping into this melt-up chart oh i've noticed this i left myself a note to add the vix so I'll, I'll briefly talk about that i'm going to add that to here so i've added long vix here um i'll talk about that in just a moment but the thing is this this melt-up chart it seemed crazy for a while but now look at it now it's broken out. Now, again, it doesn't mean we couldn't roll over. And if we do, that would be severely that would be severely bearish because it means we've had a fake out that couldn't get above these highs. And likely that means new lows are coming shortly. But if we continue to hold above this level, if we continue to hold the breakout, if we continue to start to complete this sort of inverse head and shoulders pattern, and particularly if we can get above this local high set here at around 4,100, then I think we can go ahead and say these were the bear market lows. Since then, we're making higher lows. And this is likely going to resolve to the upside we ticked off the 50 basis point hike call we nailed that one it seems like we're going to get to tick off the 25 basis point hike because there's currently a 98.4 percent chance that we're going to see 25 basis points here then the question becomes is there language pertaining to a pause can we see a pause at this fomc after the 25 basis point hike or is a pause going to come after another um, 25 basis point hike later on that of course remains to be seen i think if we can tick both of these off Given where the charts are sitting, particularly if we can get above 4,100, this should open up a massive, massive rally that will be very, very hated. It will not be understood. It will be one of the angriest rallies, one of the most shorted rallies of all time. There's record amounts of bearishness in the market, record amounts of puts and shorts. Maybe they will all be right. Maybe this will roll over and everyone will make money on the crash. So I mentioned this long VIX that I've added to here. And the reason I want to talk about this is if, and it is still an if at this point, but if this melt-up thesis validates. If we continue to resolve higher, if perhaps we get the 25 basis point hike and a pause or language of a pause to come in the near future and the markets begin to front run that pause, then as this melt-up unfolds, what comes next, remember the target is much, much higher. What comes next is likely a blow-off top move. And after that blow-off top move, I believe we then enter the period of great depression, great crash, great reset that everyone thinks is coming over the following weeks. I think the market is generally positioned for the right call, which is this massive deflationary bust, but I think they're positioned too early. And I think how the game is played is that they're going to blow this move off, ban Congress from owning stocks at the top, cut the rate hikes here, and that is what will send all the markets into the biggest deflationary bust that we've seen since the 1929 Great Depression. So I've had this here for a while. I think if we get this melt up that then resolves lower. I think that Dixie, the dollar, is going to go to insane numbers, 134 to 140 plus. I think we'll see record QE, as I've been saying before. 
We'll get a bounce, but it will form a lower high. And then we get the rollover with the collapse of everything, including the dollar, the launch of CBDCs, digital IDs, social credit scores, etc. But I wanted to add this long VIX idea. I just wanted to call this out at the moment. And we likely are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But remember, if this thing validates, then what we will see is we will see the VIX continue to bleed lower. Once we get significantly lower, and I'm talking like 10 to 14, as the S&P and the US equities experience their blow off top move, then I think the trade, and I've said this before in the comments, but I'm just saying this now on the channel publicly so we can get this all down well ahead of time, called out and prepared ahead of time for what I believe will be the trade of 2023. And what I believe will be the trade of 2023 after we've played the melt up is when the top comes in, the VIX will eventually break out. And when it does, if we really are going to have one of these biggest deflationary busts since the Great Depression, then I think the trade from 10 to three figure VIX is going to be the trade of 2023. So this is something I'm really looking forward to playing if we can get it. This is definitely getting a bit ahead of ourselves. So make no mistake, this is by no means guaranteed. And this could certainly break out in the meantime. And the equity markets could certainly roll over in the meantime. The Fed could come out and spoil the party on Wednesday. And all of this will seem completely worthless. But it's worth being aware of all outcomes. And if this melt up thesis is going to play out, if we really are going to get 25 basis point hike followed by a pause over either this meeting or the next meeting, then that should validate this melt up thesis. And if this becomes validated, then so does the biggest deflationary crash of all time. And the big question is, how do you profit the most from this? Well, of course, you profit on the way up. You want to exit near the top and then you can move to shorting equities. But my preferred way of shorting equities is to long the VIX. And I think this VIX trade will be absolutely monstrous because this was the C19 plunge. This was an absolutely enormous trade. And if we're going to have a deeper crash than we had in the C19 plunge, then I would expect this to come from a 10 to 14 range all the way into three figures. So this trade will be absolutely ginormous. So as ever, one day at a time, but I have added that to the melt up chart. As you can see here, this, I'm going to use this as my, this is my call out. So it's not a prediction. It's just, I'm, I'm just telling you that if this indeed validates, which I kind of expect it to do this week, then long VIX will be the trade of the year for me personally. I also wanted to point out that this is a NASDAQ chart and in the orange here is the percentage of NASDAQ stocks above their 200 day moving average. As of Friday's closed, we now have a reading over 60%, as you can see here, 62.37%. So 62% of the NASDAQ stocks are now above the 200 day moving average. This is indicative of wide market breadth, which means wide market participation and increasing strength from the NASDAQ. The same is true of the S&P 500. So whilst we have this technical breakout working on this technical repair, the S&P 500 stocks above their 200 day moving average now sit at over 60% as well, as you can see here down at the bottom by the blue. So again, if this move is going to be for real, this is the sort of thing you'd want to see. You would want to see, rather than have a handful of the leaders at the top by market cap carrying the index higher, you would want to see the majority of stocks taking part in the rally. And that is what we are seeing. We have over 60% participation in both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. This tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes for the stock market in the week ahead. So super, super interesting developments as of the closes on Friday. There's still a little bit of work to do. The S&P needs to really clear 4100 before we can sort of sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. The Fed also needs to not destroy markets on Wednesday and anything can happen. I kind of expect them to be vocally hawkish. I kind of expect them to still want to maintain this strict and restrictive policy in the tone of voice and the language they use. I don't expect them to just come out and say, that's it, mission accomplished. We're pausing rate hikes. Markets are going to rally. I don't really expect them to ignite a melt up on purpose. So I expect them to come out and say some hawkish things. But the important thing will be not to listen to what they say and rather look at what they do. Remember, markets are forward looking. So they've already priced in the 25 basis point hike. If we can tick that off and they don't come out and hike more than that, we should be about to clear the final hurdle, looking for that pause to come over the next couple of meetings, which again, the markets will front run and therefore we should finally get to validate this melt up thesis. However, if none of this occurs, okay, if none of this occurs and it's super hawkish and they hike by 75 basis points out of nowhere and they say that they're going to do another 10 75 basis point hikes thereafter, markets are of course going to tank. This whole melt up thesis is going to be invalidated and we will have to flip short and close a lot of equity exposure that I've currently got open at the moment. 
So as ever, the way to do well in markets is to have no emotion, to have no bias. You can have expectation, but not be dogmatic. At the moment, the charts are telling us that they want to repair technically, they want to move higher, although there's still a bit of work to do. So all we can do is take it one day at a time, wait and see what the markets tell us, wait and see what the charts tell us to do, and then position accordingly. So if you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're not already, and make sure you turn the notifications on if you want to continue to get updated on all of my positioning, any changes I make, and new positions called out well ahead of time for free. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Certainly going to be a volatile week, I would have thought. I would expect a lot, a lot of chop, but ultimately what we need to be looking out for is where the closes close on Friday after the dust has settled from the FOMC meeting. And either way, we're going to learn something. We're going to know which way the markets are going because they're either going to signal to us, they're either going to tell us and let us know that all of these breakouts that occurred on Friday are now invalidated and we're going to be looking for further downside in the markets or we're going to be closing higher than we are as of Friday's closes, in which case I think this mouse up thesis is absolutely valid and confirmed. So super interesting times. That's it from me. I hope you're doing well in life. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. I hope you're looking forward to the week as much as I am. And as ever, look after yourselves. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.